Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast, it's the football podcast. Up front, straight away, I need to apologise. Uh, there was a small technical issue right at the end of the podcast, and it just cuts off. Um, short version, I'm not wanting to get the swears in too early, but this is what happens when your internet shit. Um, I believe I'm reliably informed Matt had reached the end of his thought, and I am also informed that it was the end of the podcast. So it just it just basically cuts off right at the end, and that's it. Before we get started, please do consider like, share, subscribe, and comment. Leave a review where you can leave a review. Obviously, the big one. Share that podcast around. If you've got a football fan in your life, send this podcast their way. They might even thank you for it. Right, let's get started. Here we go. This is Cookie Cast Football Podcast. Welcome on in, ladies and gentlemen. It is your weekly football update from us here at the Cookie Cast Podcast Network. Uh, thank you, as always, for joining us. It is uh, myself and the three wonderful gentlemen that you see on your screens if you're watching along on YouTube. Mr. Uh, Mrs. Mr. Mezzers, Cook, <laughs> Woodmanson, Moore. How are we this week, gentlemen? Good. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Spooky is is the spookiest time of year, as everyone is aware. Um, as as was mentioned earlier, Andy didn't even have time to clean the cobwebs off his windows. We'll uh, we'll start with uh, week ten's games, and uh, the first of which was a fixture that one of us was in attendance for, as Hull City took on Burnley. Uh, not only was he in attendance for, he was caught on camera during the half time break. Were you not, Mister Woodmanstein? I was. I was. Uh... Shocked by you, your good self, the photograph sent in, telling me how toasty warm my jacket looked on a fresh Humberside evening. Um, so, yeah, it, well, wasn't a great start to the game, shall we say, as a podcast, or fast becoming podcast favourite, Liam Miller had his season ended after 13 minutes of the game. Uh, it's been confirmed with ACL damage, and that's going to be a huge loss now. Um, just whilst we're on that note, we've now got Miller confirmed as being out for the season, and we've also got Malem and Alzate not due back until after the international break, both with calf issues, and um, 412th goalkeeper that we signed in the off-season – Cal Rushworth is off until after the international break with uh, an ankle injury as well. Uh, but one for, for Mr. Cook, as I made him aware slightly earlier in, in the week. Uh, Ryan Longman is back in training. So get those uh, books ready for around Christmas time because uh, he's not allowed contact yet. Um, but he's back. He's back. So we're, we're getting there. But yeah, the, the actual first half assessment I have written on my notes was uh, that the first half was absolute. Um, it was pretty much all passing, but no product for either side. Uh, that was until the 45th minute when Kamara, who uh, was the replacement, went down the left wing, cut the ball back to the edge of the box, and two Hull players seemingly got in each other's way until Simons decided he was going to shoot. Massive deflection. Goalkeeper just stood and watched it go in. So we'll we'll absolutely take that. I still feel like that the goalkeeper probably could have done better because I'm pretty sure it bounced twice in front of him whilst he was actually looking directly at it. And then it went in. And I was it, it was almost one of the ones that goes in in slow motion. And if it's your own goalkeeper, you probably feel sorry for him, but I reckon he he probably got ragged off for the rest of his own team for that one. Um getting into obviously into half time, one nil up against Burnley, who are doing pretty well this season. And I don't know if you guys watched much more of that game, but Hull were pretty comfortable, to be honest. It wasn't really going anywhere. Um, and as always, though, that was until Anthony across from the left after a slip by Louis Coyle. 
and that allowed Fleming to head home on 77 minutes to tie it up at one all. Fleming's first goal for the club as well, um, you know, because if, if you need somebody to get off the mark, send them, send them our way. Um, but then the rest of the game reverted to type and was bad. Um, so, yeah, it finished 1-1 with Simon scoring for Hull and Fleming scoring for Burnley. Point gained, really, compared to what it could have been, but could have been better as well. So, sort of throwing two points away from a winning position. Yeah, would agree. I always feel like if you're playing against a team that's probably going to end up in the top two, you'll always take a point at home. But like you say, given the circumstances, maybe it should have been all three. Um, not getting all three is any of us on the podcast, as none of us had a Hull City Burnley 1 1 draw. Um, Andy had a 1 0 Hull win, media. The rest of us had Burnley wins. The only person who came close was Stu with a Fleming goal for Burnley. So Stu gets off the mark with one point from the first game. The second game was taking place on the same night and was taking place on Big Boy Sky Sports TV. So I was unable to watch the whole game. I was concentrating solely on the Middlesbrough Sheffield United game. Um, Obviously, it was a game that had former Middlesbrough head coach Chris Wilder bringing his charges back to the Riverside for the first time since he was unceremoniously binned off two years ago because he was a shit. Um, so the game started, as you would imagine, has been the uh, case with most Borough games this season, the start on the front foot, take the game straight through the opposition. Um, uh, but it was actually Sheffield United who had the first real chance uh, in the first half. Um, Jezerin Rakasaki uh, managed to find his, uh, himself almost unmarked as such in the box uh, when I go at his, uh, at his effort um, saved on the line by Luke Ayling. Um the, uh, the the ball being cleared off the line was a was a, a theme for the rest of the game as uh, Burr had one cleared off the line themselves in the second half and the right back Gilchrist for Sheffield United did the same from Tommy Conway after the ball had been played back from the byline, um, looked to all all terms of all terms of that it was going in the back of the net, but Mr. Gilchrist found his there, found himself in the right place at the right time to uh, to stop Tommy Conway from uh, opening the scoring. Um, stayed like a fairly tight game. Uh, Borough probably shaded the uh, the chances until the 80th minute when the uh, when the scoring was open. So meet one two passes. Uh, around the sort of the halfway line. Uh, eventually, the ball found its way to Finn Azaz, uh, just inside the Sheffield United half. Um, he managed to carry the ball um, sort of just, just to the edge of the box. Um, whilst he was doing that, last year, I've actually made a run behind. On side, went the other side, of, and then managed to sort of split the two and make a nice little run inside. Um, Azaz clipped the ball in to around about the penalty spot where Latte last scored with a nice diving header. Make it 1-0 and take all three points for the Borough. No other scoring in the game. Predictions-wise, um, Stu had gone for a 1-1 draw but did have Latte last to score, so a point there. Matt had gone for a 2-1 Sheffield United win. Sadly, he didn't have Latte last to score, no points. I went for a 2-1 Sheffield United win but did have Latte last to score, so one point. Andy, however, king of the optimism, had gone for a 2 0 Middlesbrough win. Goes for Hamilton and Latte Laugh, netting him two points. So Matt still to score from two games, myself on one point, Stu and Andy both on two. Speaking of Mr. Moore, we go to his team next, as they were also on Big Boy Sky Television on Friday night, where Leicester City took on Nottingham Forest at the Crisp Bowl. Sorry, the King Power Stadium. Um, how did it go down? And were you able to see any of this one, or were you just following on BBC slash Sky News? I, I was following on Sky News. <clears throat> so it was, uh, that, sky, that sky life is too rich for my uh, cloth, as it were. Um, so, yeah... Um, 
yeah, good, 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 good all around. I can't, can't really <laughs> kind of say much better than that. Um, kind of from from the highlights that I've watched, like the extended highlights that you get on Match of the Day. I mean, mate, it makes it made Forest look really dominant. Um, like lots and lots of chances. Um, so first goal, Forest got the first goal about seventeen minutes. I want to say sixteen, seventeen minutes. Bit scrappy, crossed into the box. Leicester made two terrible attempts at clearing it. Um, finally, slotted into the back of the net by Ryan Yates. Um, I think I said to you guys the other day that um, Colin Frey, who's like commented on Forest like till I can like since I can remember, um, said that on the commentary on uh, BBC like Radio Nottingham, he said, "Oh, Yates has scuffed that into the back of the net there." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "Shit house in the shit house." Um, <laughs> and then, uh, and then speaking of a shit house, um, six minutes later, Jamie Vardy equalised. Um, celebrated in his usual way. Yeah. Um, kind of dragged out a little bit till like just after half time. Um, and then a really nice move um, by, I think it kind of got overlooked kind of in the highlights, but Moreno does a really nice like back heel down the uh, down the down the left hand side um, to Hudson Odoi, who threads it to Elliot Anderson, who then kind of clips it into uh, Chris Wood, who on the turn just kind of like instinctively hit it to make it two one. Um, Forest third came from I mean call it route one, a long pass, whatever people want to call it now, sell straight over the top. I think I said to both Paul and Stu when I saw them in the past few days that Faze or whatever his name is, who was terrible in the terrible in the Premier League when Forrest first came up, he was terrible in the Championship last year as well. And shock horror, lads, he's still terrible in the Premier League this year. Um, so like Wood just kind of guided him. To, he kind of guided him into heading, like mis- either missing the header or laying the header up for him and then kind of nodded it in himself to make it 3-1. Uh, past, after that, like, well, I kind of I've skipped ahead a little bit. Well, after that, uh, Ryan Yates had an uh, opportunity to make it 4-1 and shinned it over the bar, to which, going back to the previously mentioned Colin Frey conversation, he went, I said you scuffed the first one in. However, let's talk about the one that you missed at three one, just to kind of really kind of stick it in on him. And I think you know, obviously we joke about Ryan Yates being a shit house. I mean, that is purely on the pitch. Whenever you whenever you see him on the pitch in interviews, anything like that, he does just seem like a genuinely nice guy who is absolutely made up that he's playing football and for his hometown club as well. Um and he like he laughed about it. Um I think there was also Clips going round of him coming and speaking to Martin O'Neill because Martin O'Neill was on Sky Sports as well, and he's like, "Oh, you know, I owe everything to this man because obviously O'Neill was the one who gave him his debut for Forest as well, so he kind of appreciates where he comes from." Um, so yeah, Forest three-one win. Yates with one, Wood with two, Vardy with one, and he also chucked in a little bit of his own shit housing of just kind of linking arms with Milenkovic and then chucking himself to the ground to try and get a pe- to try and get a penalty as well, to which then Milenkovic waved a big meaty arm at him as if to tell him to go away and he scurried around like a little rat ears trying to convince the ref to give him a penalty. So but of course that didn't happen. So yeah, lovely. Um the other thing I was the other thing I was going to do is with that three one win it took Forrest to the top of the league. Anybody want to have a guess at any of the clubs that are below Forest? All of them. <laughs> Lots of them. But nice ones, nice, nice ones that would make people feel happy about themselves. Newcastle. Yep. Manchester United. Yep. Obviously Chelsea. Wolves. Chelsea. Uh, no, just above the bus. Oh. 
The spuds. The spuds are below us as well. Ah, of course. Of course. So, yeah. All, all very nice. All very, very nice. That's yes, irony. Sure. So you can a little trip over to the crisp ball and end up above the spuds. Well done. Right. Well, perfect time. Perfect. Perfect, uh, perfect week. Um, yes. So 3 1 Forest win. Uh, Podcast wise, uh, myself, Stu, and Matt had all gone for draw in this one. Um, Stu had gone 1 1. Vardy and Anderson. So just one point for the Vardy goal there. Myself and Matt had both gone 2 2. I'd gone Vardy, Mavadidi. Anderson and Wood. Matt had gone Vardy, Ayu, Anderson and Wood. Andy had gone 2-0 Nottingham Forest. So a point for the result. And he'd also got Wood in his goal scorer. So a point for the goal scorer. So two a point, so a point for everybody there. Two points for me, Matt and Andy. Just a single point for Stu. And speaking of Mr. Woman's team, we come to his team for their second game of the week where Derby County, boo, were taking on Hull City. Yay! How did this one pan out in the end? And the day, I'm assuming you only saw highlights of this. You weren't taking a trip to Derby. Correct. Uh, I was actually with Mr Moore at the time that this game was uh, in commencement. And just as a little bit of a spoiler, there was a little bit of a smile for a little bit, and then there was a little bit of a swear for a little bit. Um so, much the same as the Burnley game just before, uh, it was a very uneventful first half. If you had the misfortune of watching any of the highlights, you might have spotted the only highlight they showed from the first half was uh, Mohamed Baloumi working hard to get the ball back in, in his own half, playing it out to uh, Kamara on the left wing, who uh, made their left back look a little, little bit silly before going clean through on goal albeit slightly from an angle, and then perfectly picking out the top of the stand. Um, so that was uh, nil-nil at halftime. Uh, Poyle uh, had, had a narrow miss that they didn't show, apparently, as well. Uh, narrowly wide from 20 yards in the first half. But again, other than that, nothing nothing doing. Um, Hull had lots of the ball uh, at the start of the second half, and then the pressure started to tell... Uh, on 57 minutes, Simon's notched his second in two games. And I believe, in terms of official league goals, it might even be his second for the club. I know he scored pre-season, but I was trying to think when he scored against Burnley, was that his first ever? Um, and nothing nothing has still come to mind in all that time. Uh, this one, however, needed no deflection. Had a lot more quality to it. Um the uh, ball was won, won back on the left wing. It was passed to Simons, who took a little touch and a turn, and then a low strike into the bottom left-hand corner from all the 25 yards. Again, the keeper, from where it was placed with the power, didn't really have any chance, but it seemed to roll along the ground. And you kind of used to then seeing them not go in, but it, it was absolutely bob on. Um, unfortunately, Hull were undone from a set-piece slightly later on in the game, um, as Brown scored on 66 minutes. Free kick from the left-hand side was swung into the box and apparently Pandor decided this was the perfect time not to know his ass from his elbow and just stand in no man's land. Um, the ball looped over from the header and again, Brown's first goal for Derby. Um, so as I said, if you needed, uh, you know, strikers to score. However, th- this we didn't quite give him the full rub this time, as it were, because um, he went off injured by the end of the game. So he'll be, uh, yeah, not scoring his second goal this week, shall we say? Uh, we did have a penalty claim turned down late on for a pull on Kamara. Uh, referee was having none of it, and the game fizzled out with another one-one draw. Ironically enough, Brown needing a full run after uh, being injured, apparently. Um, Predictions-wise, Stu, Matt and Andy all went for Hull away wins. Um, Sadly, did not predict Brown or Simons in any of their goal scorers. So, no points across the board. I had predicted two goal scorers, neither of which were Brown and Simons. But I did predict a 1-1 draw. So I do bag myself two points for that particular game. And our last game 
of week 10. Oh my. Event filled would be a little bit of an understatement. It was Norwich City versus Middlesbrough. Again, on big boy Sky, to- uh, Sky Sports Television. Although it did take me a while to find, as every time I kept trying to put it on, it just kept going back to the uh, the Sky Sports main event game of Chelsea versus Newcastle. Um, which I had less than zero desire to watch. Um, so, Norwich versus Borough. Um, opened with a bit of a belter. Um, the first goal scored by Borgia Saints in nine minutes. Um, to say it was a bit of a screamer would be a bit of an understatement. The ball was being played around on the left-hand side and um, made its way to the feet of Mark Hondes. Um, he, uh, he carried the ball towards the edge of the box. It was knocked off the ball by uh, Anthony Dykesteel, who was in for uh, Luke Ayling to give the squad a bit of a, a rotation as there was uh, the second game in the space of a week. Um, so obviously Dykes has gone to win the ball has made the challenge and knocked Mark Hondes off the ball unfortunately the ball's gone into the path of Saints who's just sort of put it out of his feet and then just hit an absolute rasper straight into the top right hand corner if, if, if none of you have seen it lads you need to get on the uh, on the highlights of this. what an absolute screamer definitely obviously you never want to see your team concede but when they do when they do go behind to a goal that's just pure quality, you just have to stand up and applaud that one. And that would definitely fall into that category. Um, they weren't behind for long, as on the 13th minute, Tommy Conway helped himself to the equaliser. Bit of a helpful ball, sorry, helpful, bit of a hopeful ball. Uh, it was clipped in from the left-hand side from the left-back Neto Borges. Um, Conway managed to get himself free and onto the end of the ball with a volley near the back post. Um, kind of caught the keeper out at his near post a little bit, on the, not unsighted but he just obviously didn't have time to set himself should probably have saved it but he did go in uh, and made it 1-1 uh, 1-1 became 2-1 on the 40th minute as Tommy Conway took himself to a second goal uh, and this was just a pure team goal, Norwich had a corner um, punched clear by Seni Yang uh, to the edge of the box where Anthony Dyke still got another touch on it just to sort of take it away from the uh, the Norwich player into the path of Ben Doak, who uh, went on a bit of a mazy dribble, um, got it to about um, about 25 yards out and just laid the ball into the path of Anthony Dykesteel, who tracked the run with him. Dykesteel looked up, saw that Tommy Conway was unmarked at the edge of the box, um, played it into his path, and he rolled it into the, bo- into the back of the net via the inside of the post to make it 2-1. Um, Norwich... Then almost went down and equalised to make it 2-2 as Borgia Science uh, had an effort that just clicked the outside of the post and went wide. Um, and that proved to be a bit costly for Norwich as Borough made it 3-1 just before half-time, um, two minutes after the 45th minute, actually, um, where Finazaz finally got his first of the season. Um, Tommy Conway had picked out Hayden Hackney on the edge of the box who had a shot. It was keepered by the pa- uh, parried by the keeper, even, into the path of Ben Doak. He uh, took the ball to the byline, clipped it across the face of goal. He took a little bit of a deflection off Riley McGree, and then Finazaz was there at the back stick about two yards out to bundle it home for 3 1. So Borough went into the half time break, 3 1 ahead. On the 69th minute, they had a chance to wrap the game up as they were given a penalty. Um, one of the Norwich players just very wayward with their, uh, their, their sort of their play, just brought Riley McGree down, clear foul clear penalty. Tommy Conway stepped up to uh, try and bag his hat trick, um, tried to psych out the keeper and instead just basically passed it back to him. Not a very good not a very good penalty. Straight along the ground, very much in the keeper's reach. Um, would it prove costly was the question mark. Well, Borgia Sainz was doing his best to have a bit of a one-man goal of the season competition and on the 71st uh, minute, um, he made it 3-2-3. Uh, two, um, the ball had been uh, there was a free kick it was clipped into the box uh, Doyle managed to get on the end of it around the D um, carry it into the sort of the left hand channel um, picked out Sainz who took a touch to get it out of his feet and then just curled it into the top right hand corner past Seni Dieng did, uh, did get a hand on it but he couldn't keep it out to make it 2-3 and then the comeback was completed on the 80th minute um, when the right back Fisher Got the ball out on the right-hand side. Put a bit of a speculative ball in towards the near post where you can imagine nine times out of ten, Dieng just falls on it, collects the ball, 
no danger. Misread the flight a bit. Uh, it's either pushed, it's either been pushed against the post or it's hit the post. He's gone to obviously save it in the goal. Uh, he's in the goal, but his legs are out of the goal. The ball rebounds, hits his feet, and goes straight into the roof of the net. An absolutely ridiculous goal that nine times out of ten will probably just bounce to safety, but it's just one of those, if the Borough are in town, they should really be winning the game. The three went up, they've got a chance to make it 4-1 and kill the game, but they don't take it, and they eventually get punished. So, 3-3. Three, three. Um, there was a little bit of uh, controversy on the 87th minute as uh, Hayden Hackney was trying to break with the ball. Uh, Kenny McLean just cynical foul, just trying to bring him down. Um, so you see yellow cards given for all the time. Uh, but this time the ref actually had the balls to uh, produce a straight red as uh, he basically tried to take him out of the ankle. Uh, and if he'd have got it, if he'd have got it much more wrong, he probably would have broken Hayden Hackney's ankle. So uh, a fair, fully justified red card to me for Kenny McLean Norwich went down to 10 men Borough pushed they could not find the winner sadly so from being in a position where they almost couldn't lose the game they almost did and eventually had to settle for a 3-3 draw podcast predictions wise none of us had predicted a draw so there's no point there for the result Andy had gone for a 2-0 Borough win no goals for Doak or Berg's dog sadly so no points for Mr Cook Matt had gone for a 2-1 Norwich win. Sargent and Nunes with the goals for Norwich. Latte laughed with the goal for the Borough, so no points for Matt. Myself and Stu had both gone for 2-1 Norwich wins. Both had predicted Sargent and Saints to score for Norwich, so bonus point for the goal scorer there. I had McGree down to score for the Borough. Stu had Hamilton down to score for the Borough. So just the one bonus point apiece for myself and Mr Woodmancy, which means that after five games of the week, Matt has two points. Andy has four points. Mr. Woodbutty himself has four points, but taking the win this week with six points for a total of five games. Big pat on the back for Mr. Paul Williams. Um, that brings us to the end of week 10. <laughs> oh, no, did I miss something there? No, oh. the, the, the people on YouTube will enjoy that one. We'll, uh, we'll leave that little Easter egg there. I'll have to watch you back and see <laughs> what I've done. So, week 11 brings with it one, two, three, four, five games in total. We will take a small, short break to compose ourselves and bring with it our predictions for those five games. Don't touch your dial. We will be right back. And just like that, we're back on your television screens, ladies and gentlemen. So, like we said, week 11 brings with it five games to predict. The first of which sees Premier League action in the way of Nottingham Forest versus West Ham United. Mr Moore's team, he will give his prediction last. I'll jump in. I've gone for a two-two draw on this one. I've got goals for Wood and hudson Adoy. For Forest and a goal apiece for Old Boy, Mikhail Antonio and Podcast Old Boy, Jared Bowen. Stu? Mine feels a little bit route one on that front as well. I've gone for a 1 1 uh, Forest West Bam result and I've got Wood and Bowen. Andrew? It's 2 0. Absolutely 2 0. Got 2 0 right now, over. Um, just like everybody, has, uh, I, I feel like it's uh, it's all hard now to have wood. Uh, but I also have wood under the table as we speak. And um, my favourite Simpsons character, Hudson Adoy. Adoy. Uh, I could see you uh, shaking your head. Um, which is either an annoyance at me picking the same prediction as you, or annoyance that you think that I'm talking absolute bollocks, which is probably the more the more likely of the uh, of the two. Mr. I Martin. mean, I've got used to the latter, so it's a constant disappointment in that. So it doesn't require a reaction. So uh, it was it was the fact that you virtually predicted exactly the same as what I've done. I've gone for a Forest two all draw, Wood and Alanga to score for Forest. 
and Antonio and Bowen to score for West Ham. Obviously, they're coming off a good result against Man United. I think they've been better away from home than they have at home, I think, if memory serves me right. Um, I just worry that that they're going to come to Forest with a bit of kind of wind in their sails and maybe Lapategi. I'm pretty sure I might have, I don't know if I messaged you guys about it or I certainly thought it about, ah, huh, he's not doing a great job, is he? Um, which generally comes and bites me on the arse when it comes to making predictions like that. See uh, Matese at uh, Crystal Palace because <laughs> definitely gave him both barrels on this podcast. And like, they've dropped their £30 million striker <laughs> to, for him. Oh. Then me, me, me mocking Eddie and Ketty means he's probably going to score a hat trick this weekend. So get your money on that, folks. We shall see. The second game sees championship action with Hull City taking on Portsmouth. I think I think we can safely say, and I hope for all involved, that that stupid arsehole with the big bell isn't at the ground, ringing it and just annoying everyone. Too shit. Uh, it's obviously John, Mr. Uh, Wonders' team. He will give his prediction last. Yes? I was going to say, John Portsmouth Football Club, oh, something. Whatever his surname is. Yeah. He is a menace to society. Uh, yes, Hull versus Portsmouth. Let's go to Mr. Andrew Cook for your prediction first, sir. Just got, just got to get a goal. Hull needed just a goal. So it's a one nil. No surprises around picking if it's all scoring a goal. Media, of course. I, I thought I thought the funsies had uh, a bra a Miller prediction, but uh, I thought it was a rubbing side in the wind, maybe. So. Unless in the interim, Hull have signed a player who has decided to change his name from the correct spelling of Miller to Millar. No, I'll be yeah. very surprised. Yeah. Uh, Matt, what have we got down for Hull Portsmouth? I've got 2 1 Hull. Simmons and, well, Balumi. So, and, uh, and Sadie for uh, uh, Pompey. That slag Sadie, she gets everywhere. Um, I too. I've gone for a whole win. I've gone 2-0. Media and Slater. Stu? Uh, I have agreed with Mr Moore's prediction of 2-1. So I've got us to win at home. Mark that one on your calendars, gentlemen. Um, I've gone for Potts to score for Portsmouth. And seeing as he's started to Seemingly rotate Bedia and Pedro as a starter. Um, I've I've gone for Pedro to score this time, and Regan Slater. Seems to be the sort of game he'll just turn up and smash one in from about twenty yards. So we'll see. Well, two of us will be very happy if that was the case. So are we going off the? Does he does this Pedro? Does he play with Jao Pedro on the back of his shirt or just Pedro? Uh, Jao Pedro. The full, the full kit and caboodle. Thankfully, he didn't have a middle name because otherwise he'd need to wear a long sleeve top. But um, we'll, well, it's just, it's very much. It, it would be giving Venegar of Hesseling vibes, which I can only assume when he signed for Hull back in the day. The club should go like. No. Our third game of the week takes us to Teesside for Middlesbrough versus Coventry City and Paul Williams's first. In person game of the season. Ooh. Ooh. Obviously, my boys, I will give my prediction last. Stu, what have you got down for Borough Coventry? Haven't you got a thing about Coventry games, Paul? I mean, come on. Um, <laughs> so I've gone for a 1 1 draw. I've got. Uh, I'm I'm playing playing the odds again on the basis of 
I spent a lot of time predicting Latte Lath and Azaz as they were overdue, and they seemingly now have uh, filled their quota for a little while. So I'll go back to McGree until he scores. Um, and I've gone for Sakamoto for Coventry. I suppose you want to um, maybe sort of predict like the entire squad to score at some point. Just if it was allowed, I, if it was allowed, I'd even pick Woodgate if it would help you, Paul. But unfortunately, my Woodgate. powers are non non-existent. I'll, I'll, I'll go for a sixteen number. Yeah, just just to play. <laughs> just a, just a hey, we've got we've got Mister Optimism. I'm sure his his uh, prediction is coming hot out of the cannon any second now. The next time either or to any of our teams play Leeds, 16 nil win incoming. 4th of you January uh, for our team, for my team, Andy, so you can mark that one down. You read it here first. Uh, let's, let's go to Mr Optimistic himself. Mr Cook, what have you got down for Borough versus Cov? I feel like I'm getting some kind of like reputation here of being like all optimistic. It's not, it's not the case. 2-0 to Borough, please. <laughs> I agree with Stu. I've been I've been throwing Latte's name out left, right, and centre. So uh, I'm going to go with my other favourite player, Doctor Bergsov, um, to score one of those goals, um, and, and, and then I'll put Latte down for the other. Very nice. Class, Matt. Oh. What have you gone for? Oh, uh, I've gone for a 3 2 Borough win. Cool. Goal, goal, goal. Goal scorers? I've got Conway, Azaz, and Latte Laugh. I'm not falling for this, or they've scored, so I'm not going to predict them in Malarkey. I'm straight yeah. in there. Yeah, cheers, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> just might as well just say yours was shit, Stu. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I like your theory. It's wrong. <laughs> Uh, um, and then Sims and Torp for Coventry. Torp. Was he the guy who scored against United in the FA Cup semi final? It was the one that we got ruled out. I think it was him. I don't pay that much attention. Um, not too sure. Not too sure if they find themselves in the bottom three now, but Coventry were in the bottom three going into the weekend. Um. I think they got the win against Luton and they may now be about like 19th or something like that. But, as has been discussed in the podcast before, Coventry very much falls into the bogey side category for Borough. Don't, I think they've lost the last four to them or something like that on on the spin. It might be three. Um, one of which, of course, was the second leg of the Championship Playoff semi-final, which I was in attendance for, which was nice. Um, so I've not gone optimistic on this one. I've gone for a two-two draw. So again, I also think goals will be plentiful in this one. Uh, I've gone for Conway and Latte Laugh myself, and I've gone for a goal each for Wright and Sims for Coventry. Two games left. The fourth game of the week is the midweek fixture and sees Oxford United taking on Hull City. Now, of course, it's a midweek fixture, therefore it will be live on the Sky Sports Plus channel for those who have that subscription and are able to watch. Um, Mr. Woodman's his team, he will give his prediction last. I've gone for a 1-1 draw between these two. I've gone for a goal apiece for Harris and Slater. Matt, what have you got down for Oxford versus Hull? You'll be shocked that I've agreed with you and gone for a one all draw. Yeah. Goal scorers? Yeah. I've, I've, I've done my usual kind of thing of picking a weird name and then now I can't read my own writing. Uh... <laughs> John is every week for insight such as this because Matt is not the only person this happens to, is he? <laughs> <laughs> El Mazuna? Oh uh, my Oxford. good Christ. Right, hang on. The only reason I picked it was they reminded me of Mizuno football boots. Remember Mizuno football boots? Like, when yes. we were kids. Flash. Yes, indeed. Are they not still kicking about? Can you not still yeah. buy oh. Mizuno? I haven't bought football boots in a long time. Um, yeah, so El Mizuno and Bedia. 
for uh, Hull. Lovely stuff. Andy, how many will Hull win by? Just one. One goal. Of course. Um, decided to once again change it up, so I looked for this guy to uh, join Hull's injured ranks. First stone. Go on, Stu. How will it play out? Uh, I have agreed with Mr. Cook. Uh, I've gone for a 1 0 away win with Balumi to score. Everyone's favourite type of cheese. And our final game of the week. Also available on the Sky Sports Plus channel for those of you who have said subscription. Queen's Park Rangers versus Middlesbrough. My team, I will give the last prediction of the week. So we'll go to Matt for his prediction for Queen's Park Rangers versus Middlesbrough. Let's see if we can reverse it and see if I have gone for the same prediction as him. <laughs> I have gone for a Borough 2 1 win. Goal, goal scorers? Cellar <laughs> uh, for. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. For QPR and Latte Lath and Conway for uh, Borough. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I feel like there's, there's going to be more than just one person. <laughs> uh, Andy? Sorry. Two on Borough. <laughs> no. That's not optimistic enough. Nil two to the Borough. And again, I'm mixing no. it up. I'm throwing, I'm throwing around. Not mixing it up too much. I don't like to stay too far out of the comfort zone. So I've got Dr. Bergsorg again. But I've decided to go with a different player. Hamilton. Why not? It's been a bit of a slow start for, uh, for old Micah, Mr. Hamilton. Um, someone say even game. slower for Dr. Bergsorg. Um, Eventually, they, 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 they will come good, I have no doubt. Uh, Stu, may I also recommend that you may have got two goals scores for Borough that are named Latte, Latte and Conway? Yes, uh, that is absolutely <laughs> correct. Uh, I have also got, I've gone with a 1-2 scoreline, uh, but my QPR goal scorer is Saito, purely because I've seen him a couple of times this season and he looks like an absolute little shit. <laughs> Saito. Saito. Literally, as it is uh, spelled. And then Latte Laugh and Conway. Yep. Very nice. Well, folks, you'll be shocked to hear that for the third time on this particular game, we have a 2-1 Middlesbrough away win predicted. Um, for the second time, I have also predicted Cellar to score. Queen's Park Rangers, but my two Borough goal scorers are McGree and Azaz. So not entirely the same, just very, very similar. That, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of Week 11's predictions and therefore this week's podcast. Does anyone have anything they would like to bring to the table? Yes, Mr. Moore. Ahem. Another week, another forest fine. Um, oh, God. <laughs> they've been fined £125,000 for the melee against Chelsea the other week. So it's um, three times the amount that Chelsea got fined. So Chelsea got fined forty grand. Forest got fined two hundred and twenty twenty five grand. Um, I think. So they've had apparently they've had six of these in three seasons, which I don't remember the six. How I do, however, suspect that a series of dog shit refereeing decisions might have caused two of them, or maybe three of them, namely Bournemouth when Bolly got sent off, uh, Liverpool when we didn't get the ball back when we should have had the ball back. And Everton, when we should have had three penalties, I assume those are the three occasions. I can't, I don't know what the other two were before that, but six in three seasons is quite a record. And uh, what did they say? 
the FA felt like they needed to do something because they were, it looked like they were becoming serial offenders and that were not addressing the problem. I'm like, we're not stealing sweets from a, from a shop here, are we? It's like, you know, I have a little look into why. The, you know, I'm not saying that it's right. It's a bad example for kids and all that kind of thing. But there needs to be some level of why is this club having these kind of things? And quote unquote, well, of course, unquote myself. It's because we're getting fucked over a lot. Would be my kind of uh, would be my reason for that one, you know. So yes, 125 grand out of the coffers. Apparently, it does count towards PSR as well. So yay, even better. So Stu looks that, absolutely confused on the end. Add that. No, I'm not, tweet. Not, com- not confused. It's it's starting to feel a little bit like. They're all playing Monopoly, but the banker's got a personal vendetta. Yeah. I mean, it makes me laugh. I was going to say that the other thing I was going to Obviously, Gary O'Neill very much insinuated that VAR is biased and a lot of the league are biased against Wolves. And he's got a little slap on the wrist and been asked to explain himself. Oh, I'm sorry. He's done that repeatedly in press conferences for the past what season he is a whiny whiny little rat bastard him and yet nothing seems to have happened to them you know whereas Nuno's on his three match ban and every man and his dog's been fined at Forest I'm expecting a bill coming through my letterbox at any point um it's just yeah so, yeah, another 125 grand down the swanee. Uh, Face to say, Forrester said they're going to appeal it. So, uh, yeah. So there you go, what do you think to that? Once again, apologies for the abrupt ending. I, assure, I am assured it was absolutely the end. It just cut off a moment too soon. Big thank you for watching, big thank you for listening, big thank you for being here. Before you go, do consider like, share, subscribe and comment. Leave a review where you can leave a review. Check out the website, it's thecookiecast.com. There we've got social media links and an email button, and that way you can get in touch with us. And that is it for this one. Until next time, I'm going to say bye, and I'll see you then. Thank you for listening to these grumpy old men talk about football. If you've enjoyed this episode, please like, share and subscribe.